Well, I've come to you from Arizona. It's a bit warmer there. Uh, but I only see an occasional snowflake coming down. So I'm extremely happy to be here and to address the graduating class today. And let me offer my sincerest congratulations to the School of Mines graduating class of 2012. Uh, your hard work, your perseverance, and your effort is about to pay off. You're about to go into the next phase of your life. And with the world in its uncertain future, you're bound to find excitement out there. And to some degree, I think, a degree of chaos. But regardless of the external environment, your education experience here at School of Mines will serve you well. I'd also like to congratulate the parents, friends, family of the graduates today. Many of you can now stop making that down payment on your children's future. <laughs> you ought to see what the tuition is at Stanford if you think it's bad here. <laughs> for the graduates, I want to offer you a bit of advice as you go forward. And for the last several years, you've uh, studied hard under the guidance of your professors who know their subject material very well. You've read the great books. You've done problem assignments. You've written papers on esoteric topics. You've passed a myriad of exams. And along the way, you've had the benefit of the words of wisdom of your professors, the school administrators, the other faculty members, mentors, and others. Today, I also want to offer you a bit of advice, a bit of wisdom, some advice that you can take forward with you for the rest of your career. But my words of advice, I have to warn you in advance, are not coming from the great books. They're coming from a source of ultimate wisdom, a source that we've all consulted throughout our lifetime, a source which, over my 45 years in the technical fields, I've consulted, and I've never found this source of wisdom to be wrong. That source of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, is the Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> and the examples I want to give you today are from real fortune cookies that I've collected over the last three decades <laughs> from around the world, and I think they're very appropriate for today's discussion. And I realize this may be a bit unconventional in a school of higher learning, especially at a commencement, but I do believe you'll have an easier time remembering the advice I'm about to give you than you did trying to remember the answers to your last exam. <laughs> and that's my purpose of standing in front of you today, is basically to give you some advice you can carry forward for the rest of your professional career something that you can recall a lot easier than the second law of thermodynamics or a solution to Schrodinger's wave equation. <laughs> I can see some of you love those solid state thermo courses. Well, let's get started. First fortune cookie comes from my favorite Chinese restaurant in Los Altos, California, in the middle of Silicon Valley, Chef Chu's. And that fortune is very appropriate for today's discussion. It states, very simply, that the world will always accept talent with open arms. The world will always accept talent with open arms. And translated, that very simply means that education is the key that opens doors to opportunity. With a good education, you have a chance to move forward to the next step. Whether it's to graduate school, to get the job of your dreams, to move forward in life, to pursue research interests, to be an entrepreneur, maybe even to make enough money to pay back your college loans. <laughs> Good education is just the start, however. It gives you that opportunity to move forward to the next step. But to be really successful, you have to continue learning as you go forward. In fact, I think most of the Older folks in the audience would tell you today that you've just completed the easiest part of your education. The more difficult part will start in the professional workplace. I'd also suggest that you have to have a passion for what you do. 
And that's really the talent the world is looking for. That talent is defined as a great education plus a love and a passion for the everyday job at hand. If you have that combination, then I don't think you can go wrong. Whether you want to be a poet, a physician, a physicist, a petroleum engineer, whatever you want to be, if you have talent, passion, and education, the world will readily accept your skills. There's a lot of talk in the world today about competition, a lot of talk about what jobs are safe in what country, what jobs might be offshored, and what sort of profession you might pursue on that basis. I think most of those discussions are bogus, because I think regardless of your projected future, if you have talent, that educational background and that passion, regardless of what you choose to do, the world will accept you with open arms. Second fortune cookie. This one comes from the Golden Phoenix, 16th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, my hometown. Fortune cookie has to do with the concept of competition. Competition at the individual level, at the corporate level, or even at the international level. It states very simply that you cannot win unless you choose to compete. You cannot win unless you choose to compete. In today's world, we all know there's increased competition. We know that no entity can rest on its laurels. Just because you're number one today doesn't mean you'll be number one tomorrow. If your basketball team was number one this season, it won't necessarily be number one next season without hard work. The individual worker in the marketplace knows there's competition. In the corporate sector, you know there's competition from around the world. But interestingly, there are apparently some entities, entities like state and national governments who have yet to realize this truth. For example, if you take the United States, a country that has the highest gross national product in the world, one of the highest standards of living in the world, a place where investments in innovation and entrepreneurship in the 20th century gave rise to great wealth and opportunity to its citizens. Today, the United States is struggling with this concept of competition. How do you compete with the likes of China and India and other countries? How do you create the smart people and the smart ideas necessary for success in the 21st century? We're currently working and struggling with these issues. But fundamentally, we're hampered in the United States by the concept that we've been number one for the last 50 years, and therefore we have an inalienable right to be number one for the next 50 years. We don't have to do anything different. I think nothing could be further from the truth. If you want to win, you have to choose to compete. And that means you have to do the things necessary to be competitive. You can't just rely on hope. I think you're all aware of the status of K through 12 education in the United States. We used to have the best system in the world and now we have one of the poorer systems in the developed world. We used to be the number one nation in the world in terms of the percent of our adults with a college degree. Amongst the OECD countries, we've now fallen to number 13 or number 14 in that category. You know that our investments in research and development have been stagnant for the last few decades. In fact, today, our investment as a percentage of our gross national product in the United States is only about half of what it was two or three decades ago. And this is at a time when other countries around the world are increasing their stream of investment. Soon we as a country, as will every country on the face of the earth, have to decide to compete just as you as individuals will have to decide to compete if you want to be successful 
in your future. My final fortune cookie, there are only three of them, has to do with individual initiative. You know, sometimes in life, we depend too much on others to solve our problems. And certainly if you pick up the newspaper or you look at the television today, there is no shortage of problems around the world which scream for solution. And seemingly there's no shortage of massive government programs to attack these problems. This last fortune cookie is an international one. It comes from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And it really addresses this issue of initiative with the following statement. A small deed done is better than a great deed planned. And if you think of that for a moment, it seems obvious. Small deeds are done by individuals or small groups. A teacher helping a student, a doctor donating their time to helping a poor patient, recent college graduate giving up a few years of their professional career to volunteer for Teach to America to help teach kids in underserved neighborhoods. Someone who provides a microloan to an entrepreneur in a developing country. These are all small deeds done. These all help people. The contrast to the great deed planned is the global platform. Take the United Nations, for example. The United Nations Millennium Development Goals, solving the issue of world hunger solving the issue of illiteracy around the world. In the United States, the government discussion of how to save Social Security or Medicare for future generations. These great deeds planned and their lofty goals hardly ever achieve anything. You don't have to look far today to see the increasing dependence of society on these great deeds planned, when in fact, we should really be focusing on the small deeds done by individuals. What the individual can accomplish, society can build on. President Kennedy stated this many years ago in a slightly different fashion. When he asks, don't ask what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? I think it's important for all of you as you enter your professional career to focus on the details, the results, the accomplishments, and the ways that your individual actions can carry much more importance and impact than the great deeds planned by higher government. Let me end by wishing you the best in your careers. There are only two things in life that once gained can never be taken away from you. They are your education and your personal integrity. Cherish both of these qualities and always make the most of them as you move forward in your professional career. Congratulations again and good luck in your future life.